What's up YouTube, my name's Kenneth. Today we're gonna to talk about the Rubik's Futuro Cube, and this is the second version. So if you didn't see the video I made on the first version, the Futuro Cube is basically a motion controlled gaming cube, and it's got multiple apps on it, and they're all puzzles and games. And the first puzzle really is to figure out how to turn on the Futuro Cube. And I'd really like to give it to someone new and, and ask them to turn it on. And it's fun to kind of watch them struggle. Usually what they'll try to do is tap the sides or shake it or look for a button. Um, but the way you turn it on is you have to do this gesture where you kind of spin the cube in a circular motion like that. And you don't really twist it. You kind of have to hold it steady. And you spin it like that quickly and it will turn on. So once the cube is on, you're in a menu. And this is the blue menu. And each side is its own app. Como cool. Hubris. Gravity puzzle. Roadrunner. To enter into the app, you tap once on the top and you'll start the app. If you tap twice, it will give you a description about that app. And if you tap it three times, it will reset the app and you can start from uh, scratch. And if you want to turn it off, you can tap the bottom twice. And if you want to go to the next menu, normally you would tap the side. But uh, when you first get it, it's kind of disabled. And the reason they do that is uh, you kind of have to get used to the tapping and people will accidentally tap the side when they mean to tap the top and, and vice versa. So uh, they disable the other menus when you first get it. And the way you re-enable the menu is you have to turn the cube end over end. Hubris. And it will open up or unlock the cube so you can Gravity puzzle. do multiple uh, menus. So now if you tap the side, you can go to the green menu, Gravity challenge. and then you have the red menu. The red menu is mainly for uh, setting type stuff, so you can go into transportation mode, you can turn the volume down, and things like that. And then there's a fourth menu, and this menu is for uh, kind of third party apps. And so you can make your own apps, and I've made a bunch, and I'll talk about that a bit later. So let me show you a couple of the apps. So the first one I'm gonna show you is the Roadrunner, which is this one here on the blue menu. And you tap it to the top to start. And this is the easiest app ever, and I like to show this one first to people because it's instantly uh, fun to play with. So basically, you tap to start, and all you have to do is try to keep the white dot on top. And I think the other one I'm gonna show you um, is Gravity Puzzle. Gravity Puzzle. And so you tap to get in it, and I have a puzzle already going, so actually I'm going to triple tap to reset it. Tap for shuffling. So it starts and it says tap for shuff shuffling, and so you tap and it will shuffle it up. Shuffling. So now the timer has started, and the way you can t kind of turn this puzzle is if you tap. Um, what will happen is whatever side you tap, uh, it, you can kind of imagine a waterfall. So if I'm tapping this side, these pieces, these three will move down to here, and these three will come in and take its place. So if I tap quickly, you can kind of see it a little better. But you can see this side is unaffected and this side is unaffected. And then the other thing you can do is if you tap the top, it'll turn the top clockwise 90 degrees, like a Rubik's Cube. But these ones are unaffected. And this can be really challenging, especially when you start and you don't know what you're doing. Um, but eventually you can figure out how to solve it. And um, once you learn, it's not so hard, kind of like the Rubik's Cube. But it's pretty challenging, and it probably took me maybe an hour or two to, to solve the first time. Uh, but now I can do it uh, a lot quicker, under five minutes. So that's the gravity puzzle. On the green menu, there are apps that are mainly for multiplayer. And so you can actually connect two uh, Futuro Cubes together and play a game together. And that can be a lot of fun. So you can play the Tetris game and you will both get the same pieces and uh, you'll try to see who can do better than the other. Um, and they have another game that's kind of like a Connect Four, where you try to get four pieces in a row, but actually this one you have to do five in a row. And so that's kind of cool that you can do uh, multiplayer with this this puzzle. So I did mention this is the second version of the Futuro Cube. So what's different between this new version and the old version? Well, I do have the old version here, so we can kind of look at the two. And not much has changed. They're very similar. Um, the new one has slightly brighter LEDs. 
the white on the new one definitely looks whiter than the old one. Visually, I can see the difference, but it's super minor. To me, it didn't make a big difference. The other thing the new version has is it's louder. So let me go to the volume control. If you go to six on the new one, it's much louder than the six on the old one. So this one's louder and the way they made it louder was they put the speaker right up against the edge of this hole here. And so it kind of gives a little bit of a shadow now, which isn't that um, bad. Uh, you can see what the old one looked like on this side. And so the shadow is definitely noticeable. And the final thing that's really different between the two is the new one uh, uses Bluetooth 2.0 for multiplayer and uh, for its connectivity. Uh, and that makes it so it actually cannot actually do two player mode with an old version of the puzzle. It will only communicate with the new version of the puzzle. So that's a little disappointing that they don't cross communicate with the old versions. Uh, but the low energy Bluetooth is really cool because uh, it will open doors for things like talking to cell phones and making games like that. So they don't have that yet and they haven't really promised it, but um, I know for sure there's a really cool demo of someone playing Tetris and using the Futuro Cube as kind of like a controller to play Tetris. And I thought that was really cool. And so you can't really do that with the old version, but uh, hopefully in the future they come out with cool uh, features uh, based off of the low energy Bluetooth. So besides the hardware improvements in the new Futuro Cube, there's also a ton of software improvements that even work with the old version. The, some of the, the cool things you can do now is they've improved the Rubik's Futuro Cube suite. Uh, and now you have a cube manager and you can actually drag third party apps, including apps that I've written. Uh, and you can put it on your cube and you can choose where those apps go. And you can actually add them to a fourth menu, which I've already shown. And you can open up uh, the, those apps there. Another thing you can do is you can use the My Cube section, and when you put an app on the My Cube section, you can open that app from any menu by doing the menu gesture in the menu, and it'll take you directly to your favorite app. So my favorite new feature is they've made a global high score leaderboard, and I think that's really cool. So you, now you can compete with everybody, and you can try to see who's the best. And so I've had a lot of fun with this. Right now um, I'm helping them beta test it, and it's gonna go live in December, December 7th, I believe. And so it's really cool. So you can set up a, a quick profile and when you're playing uh, the apps and you get a high score, uh, you can plug in your Futuro Cube and you can sync your high scores with their server and it will rank you and you can see how you do against everybody else. So I've done this and right now I'm number one and you guys will have to try and beat me uh, because I'm at the top of their Hall of Fame. And so. What they, what they do is you there's like four or five apps right now that you can compete with and you get different scores and, uh, and ranks for each of those apps and it will then compile all those uh, kind of apps and, and determine who is kind of ranked highest among all of them. And so right now I'm number one and so you guys definitely have to try to beat me. So along with the leaderboards, they've also made a lot of improvements for developers like me who wanna make their own apps. And I think it's really cool. I think it's a lot of fun to develop for the Futuro Cube. Uh, it's basically, you can use a C type language and you can easily turn uh, LEDs on, uh, respond to tap events, uh, respond to twisting, and you always know what side's up. And it's really fun and easy. Uh, and it's really kind of a fast feedback loop. You do a little coding, you hit a button and boom, it's on this Futuro Cube. It's in your hands, it's really fun. So it's a fun experience. So anyway, I'm gonna show you two of the apps I've been working on lately. Um, the first one I call Musical Dice, and it's this purple one here. It's supposed to be a note. So if you tap it, you enter Musical Dice. And basically, uh, what you have here is a dice, and when you turn it, uh, each side is a different color. And when you tap a side, you get a note. Right? And you have basically a chromatic scale, starting with C, the low C right here. Right, and then if you rotate the cube, so we were at one, which is the lowest. Now you go up to two and you can go back to one. And it plays uh, basically all these notes and you can go all the way up to the highest note, which is six on top and six. And the lowest note is one, one. So basically you have a low C, 
and then you have mid-level octaves and high octaves. Now that's musical dice. So the other app I'm going to show you is the Rubik's Cube app. And the Rubik's Cube app was originally written by the guys who made the Futuro Cube, but I modified it a bunch uh, and kind of improved it. So um, originally it had kind of different colors and I really wanted colors that to me looked more like the Rubik's Cube. So I made different colors. The other thing is in this new version of their SDK, you can now use your own sounds and, and add uh, your own recordings. So I recorded the name so you can hear it. Rubik's Cube. Right, and uh, if you tap it twice, it has my description I came up with. This is the classic Rubik's Cube. Tap aside to twist the layer clockwise. If you tap the layer on the bottom, it will turn the layer counterclockwise. Shake it to shuffle, and good luck. So before, you couldn't scramble it, uh, and so let me go into it. Shake the cube to scramble. So now, if you shake the cube, it'll scramble. If you tap aside, it'll go clockwise, and I, I recorded the sound of me turning a Rubik's Cube, and so now you hear that instead. And I actually recorded a bunch of the sounds and I randomly show kind of different sounds, so that way it's not the exact same sound every time, it's a little bit different. And the other thing uh, I added is now you can shake it to scramble, so you shake it kind of like this. And then, um, when you start turning it, it's going to time you and it's going to use the exact same or it does use the same APIs to save your high scores. So you can use this app and you can get a high score and soon it'll be on um, their website and you can compete and see who can get the fastest time. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the Futuro Cube. Um, as you guys know, I really like this puzzle. I think it's really cool. So I definitely want to thank the, the people at Future Cube for sponsoring this video and for making the video possible because without them, I wouldn't have made the video. And uh, definitely thanks to them because they've also set up a coupon code, REDKB. So if you use REDKB uh, at FutureCubeUSA.com, you get 15% off, but it's only for the first 50 people. So you definitely want to jump on that if that's something you're interested in. Uh, and if you live outside of the US or Canada, I'm sorry it's not going to work, but uh, you can still buy one at futurocube.com. Click on buy and you can find out where you can get one. And I was told that they, they do have a bunch of uh, kind of holiday deals coming up. So hopefully you guys get a deal too. So yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks guys for watching and of course, have a great day.